Hello and welcome. So in this video we're just going to look at a new sleeping pad. It's new to the market, or reasonably new, and it's new to me. I've yet to use it. We're going to look at it now and then I'm going to take it camping and uh, give it a proper test in an overnight situation. But the mat is this, which is the Trekology Arluft Ultralight 140. And for comparison purposes, this is their new one, this is the 140, and this is the old one, which is the 80. Now the 80 is a kind of summer mat only, the R value on it is 1, I think, might be 1.7, but this is a bit thicker, this is, they're calling this a three season mat, and the R value on this, I think they're waiting for certification, but they're estimating between 4.5 and 5 as the R value. So, you know, it's, it's better for cold weather than the other one. And I know a few people that have got the other one, the uh, the 80, and they swear by it. They, they love it. Um, Mr. Burton Outdoors, he's been using it for a, for a long time. And he's used it in the winter, but he puts stuff under it, like foil mattresses and stuff. This one is, you know, you should be able to just stick it on the ground and the R value will look after you enough, except in, you know, really, really cold weather. But three seasons, it should be good. And so an R value of 4.5 to compare this is a Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. I think the R value of this is about 4, 4.1, maybe. And I've used this in, you know, bitter conditions in the winter, and it's fine. Uh, size wise, as I say, you know, this is the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite, similar R value, obviously half the size, but it's the X Lite, and this is, what, 150, 160 pounds? This is 50 quid, which is, you know, quite the bargain, should we say. Comparison wise, this is the Big Red, the Climate uh, Static V-Lux Long and Wide. I would say they're about similar, similar size. And this is a wide mat. And a final comparison, this is my winter mat, and this is the, what's this one? Exped Down Mat 9, you know, and this is a bit more beastly. So this is a good all round mat. I think it's small enough to be packable and the R value is good enough that it's going to look after you when it's quite cold. I think when you get into minuses maybe you've got a problem and you might have to put some foil under you or something. So let's get it out and blow it up and have a look at it and then I'm going to take it camping with me tomorrow. We'll see how it fares. So I've not used a Trekology mat before but I know people that do and they, they really rate them. But let's have a look at this in its entirety. So before I blow this up, a little bit of information. We've got dedicated valves for inflation and deflation. So that, I think, is, you know, for deflating. And then opening that one up. Yeah, that's then for inflation. But at the other end, we've got a built-in pump, so we'll have a look at that first before I touch that one. So this is a dedicated pump. So what you're supposed to do, I think, yeah, so, do you see that inflate all by itself? I think what you're meant to do is then either, you know, put your hands on this or your feet on it. And I saw a friend of mine had a video where he was trying to pump this up with his hands and he said this kept you know, flapping and getting in the way. So we'll see how it fares. I see what he's saying. It does kind of close on you, but because that's meant to suck the air back in. So if this was sort of had a little catch, you could pin it open or something. But I can't see it being a major problem. This is called a foot pump, so I will try it with my foot and we'll see how that goes. This is the strap that you pack the mat away with. And if I just loop that around there, that's going to hold that up. So that, you know, that's in the bag anyway. So we'll see if that works. Yeah, it's working okay. 
And the idea of this is when you blow up a mat with your breath, with your lungs, you you tend to fill it over, you know, you fill it with moist air, and over time that moisture inside the mat turns into mould and that's, a, that's not very good for the mat. Long term use, it's probably not very good for you either to be sleeping on it. But I've always blown up mats with my lungs until recently when I got a little pump. So having a built in pump, it's not a bad thing. There's an inflation valve there, you can just blow it up you know, the old fashioned way. But um, you know, this is, this is handy enough. So, that's probably good enough. Nice. Oh wow! It is a wide boy. Quite often your shoulders kind of hang off the end. But this one, there's room for my shoulders and a little bit more. And they've got a built-in pillow. But at this end, I would say it's not a perfect pillow. But if you, you know, camping pillows are often only this thick anyway. So if you stuck a camping pillow on top of that, I would suggest then that, you know, that's a, that's a, that'll be a lovely thing. Stats for you then. This costs 50 pounds. Our value estimated 4.5 to 5. Now pack down, that weighs one kilo, or there, there or thereabouts. They bill it as a three season mat. It's made of heavy duty, uh, 40D nylon. That is 12.5 centimetres thick or 5 inches which is you know monstrous and at, and at the pillow end it's 20 centimetres. It is 76 centimetres wide and you see they've got slightly raised up sides on there so these these are the side walls you know that are meant to stop you rolling off the mat. So that's a nice touch. Uh, pack size, we had a look at that, but it's supposed to be 275 centimetres by 125 centimetres. The built-in pump, they say, should take between three and five minutes, and I would say that's accurate. I mean, I just did it then, and it didn't take that long. I'd say I did it in under five minutes, and I was chatting and fiddling about as well. Uh, we've got reinforced seams and leak-proof valves, and a dedicated deflation valve, which I think is... Wait, come here. It's that one there, so you just yank that out to deflate. That's my hand, you know, that's an absolute beast of a mat. For side sleepers, you know, that's okay. That's pretty comfy, to be fair. You know, you've got room either way to roll. You've got room to lay flat on your back. The side walls do feel like a bit of a barrier, so I think that's pretty cool. Okay. All right, stopwatch is in place. Starting the clock. So three to five minutes is the estimated time. And that'll do. Stop the clock. One minute 37. So the three to five minutes that they say is average is quite generous, really. And it's not, well, I suppose it is up enough, isn't it? There's a bit of give in it. Could have gone on a little bit longer, but no more than two minutes. So, good morning. Verdict on the mat. I slept like a baby. Well comfy. I am. Um, this is a Trekology pillow. I let a load of air out of it because there's already a mat, uh, already a sort of pillow bit on here. So I let air out of that so that I could just, you know, I think to feel like a real pillow rather than an inflated thing. And um, yeah, that was super comfy. The mat itself is not a noisy one. You get some that are you know, rattly and all, you know, shuffling about on it. It's, um, it's all right. Verdict on the mat then. It's very comfortable, very wide, very thick. And uh, yeah, no, no real issues. It was down, 
I don't know, I think it was probably maybe three or four degrees last night. It was quite chilly, but not too bad. And um, yeah, I didn't feel the ground. So, success. The only issue, I suppose, is uh, would be if you were a taller person, because I'm not tall, I'm 5'8", and my feet were just on the end. I think anyone sort of six foot plus, I think your feet would be hanging off the end. But, you know, does that matter? So yeah, that is the Trekology Aluft UL140 mat. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's big, but it's blooming comfy. Cheers, thank you for watching. Uh, link in the description if you want to go and have a look at it yourself. End of video. Cheers.